All right, guys, then the real fun begins now. We start creating our first endpoint. So the first endpoint that we're going to be creating is a create endpoint. So the basic, the basic four basic uh, database operations are CRUD, create, remove, update, and delete. So the first one that we're going to be creating is the create endpoint. Now, the endpoints are always going to be, you can write the endpoints over here directly in the routes folder in the index.js. As you can notice, I've deleted the users.index because I feel like that's useless for our app. So consequently, I've also deleted the usages of the users here. And let's rename this to routes. So this would also be routes. Now we also want, since it's an API, it's a REST API, we want our endpoints to start with slash API. So you could just add slash API in the beginning and use the use everything in the routes folder and it would start with slash API slash create or slash API slash post dot create. So we could just let's just move on to it and make the endpoint first, then you understand as we go. So let's create a directory called the controllers directory. Do we have it? No. So let's create the controllers directory, which would have all our functionalities, our controllers. And in the controllers directory, let's create another directory called posts, which will handle all our post related endpoints. So posts. And inside the post directory, we have our index.js file, which would have our posts. You could also just write post.js, but like I said, I prefer this convention. All right, so in the post.js, for creating endpoints, which is basically querying the database and then making subsequent changes. So for example, for the create endpoint, what would we need? We need the database. So our post equal, we need access to the database. So our database is inside the models folder. So we have to require it using. So basically, how does it work? This is the root uh, directory it is in. So we have to go back one directory. So now we are outside of the post directory then go back another directory and then we're outside the controllers directory then go to our models directory. Now this system, I personally hate this system. Like why do I have to you know, put up trailing slashes and then go? So the shortcut that I prefer is have our base directory defined. So process.env.pwt will give our root directory path. And then you just basically append this to our root directory so base plus so just think of it this way we are inside the roots root directory which is the simple mean app directory and then from there we could just go to models then go to posts all right so that's how i'm going to define it over here now all right so this is our let's just rename it to post because i feel like this should be singular so where is it rename i guess we don't have the rename option here okay fine let's just keep it posts so let's create our first endpoint for create post for function now in the function we have a request body and our response body so every endpoint will have a request and a response a request is what we're passing to the endpoint like the parameters that we're passing be it a query parameter a body parameter or uh, any uh, any sort of just URL parameter, then we're passing for the request. So we have the request object in our. We can create the request object from our request of body. So new post, we have the request of body. The request of body will have the whole body. Will have the object of the post. We have a post object which would contain title, author, body, and uh, um, other other of the param other parameters that we've declared in our post schema. All right, so after we have an instance of our post, we need to basically save our post. We need to save the post. So how do we save it? Post dot save. And we have a callback function because in this is a, a so keep in mind Node.js. If you somehow see that your code is not working. It's basically because you have thought in a synchronous format. So you have to think asynchronously in Node.js. Everything is asynchronous. So every function that you have, like, that, uh, if you know about the Node event loop, so it's like each of the lines of code tries to happen at the same time. 
because everything is asynchronous. So if there is a function, if there is a line of code that takes longer than usual, then and suppose uh, there is a line that's console log which takes what few milliseconds, uh, then what would happen is this this code would execute later and this code would execute first because since this takes lesser time, since everything tries to happen at the same time and this takes less time than compared to this functionality, then this would try to happen first. So you would basically see the console log first and then you would see the post.save part happening later. So that and that way you get an error. So that's that's actually the main hurdle of Node.js. Everything is real time, that's all nice and fine and dandy, but then everything tries to happen at the same time because it's asynchronous. So after you save a post, you could have either of two uh, scenarios. So you could have an error or you could actually have the post object. You could actually access the post object. So if you get an error, if you run in through an error, then show me the error. Send me the error. So you have, it would be a 500 internal server error or 404. I'm just going to specify the error code over here and then you show me the error. Send me the error object so that I could see what went wrong. If not, if you don't have an error, then the default behavior would be just send me the JSON body of that post. So I'm sending the status code 200. I'm specifying this uh, status code in the beginning and I'm also showing, because status code 200 means it's successfully, uh, you uh, created a post and then now you can successfully return it. So I'm just gonna give the status code and I'm also gonna send the object as well. So if you save the post, you created an object, a, among, uh, a database object, a post object, and then you basically have the results sent to you in that endpoint. So now what you're going to do is you're going to export this function, module.exports. Now there, there will be multiple endpoints. The first endpoint I created was of course a post, a create post endpoint. There will be more. So I'm just going to send a whole body of endpoints. So there will be get post get posts so let's also create that endpoint as well so var get posts equal function and then you have a request and a response and then you just basically find all the find all the posts and then just give it to me so you just post dot find and you don't need to specify anything. You're just going to return all the objects there is in that post uh, table, in the post collection. So you're just going to send me everything. So after you successfully find all of them, you're just going to send it to me. And if there's an error, and if there's an error, then just send me, show me the error that I've run into. And res.send500 error. If not, then just show me the actual response that I want, which is 200 with the status code and show me the posts, all the posts, an array of posts. Just show me every all the data. Now, so as you can see, we have two endpoints. We have one create post and one get all the posts. Not just one post, we're getting all the posts initially. Of course, we'll have the get post endpoint as well, but for now, we have these two endpoints. Now we need to create, like, I mean, we have the functions actually, we have the controller functions. Now we need to assign it to a URL or an endpoint. Where do we do that? In the routes.index file. All right, so in the routes.index file, we have, let's declare, we have to of course import the controller functions, right? So we have the posts and then require, again, I want the base URL, that's easier for me because I don't want to write backslashes and trailing slashes and then like forget where am I and which directory I am in. So I per personally prefer this, uh, this way of finding out my directories. So you are in base plus, I'm in where, where am I? I'm here, it doesn't matter. So what I want is a controller. So controllers slash controllers slash posts. So this is where I want, this is, this is where all my uh, endpoints are. I mean, the functions are. So let's create the endpoint. So router.get will give me, let's remove this one, this existing one, because there's already one. This just renders a page, but we need a JSON 
of all the JSON array of all the post op post objects. Right, so we have posts dot get posts. No, let's just name it slash posts. API slash posts. Then our URL would look like API slash posts. So we have get posts over here and router dot put. No, not put. Post because we are creating a new post. So slash post slash create. We are creating a new post and the function for that is create post. Post dot create post. So now we have two endpoints ready, up and running, and we can now test it out in our Postman. So as I've said before, we need a tool called Postman for checking out how our endpoints are doing and how our endpoints are behaving. It's easier in Postman because you can make the post calls easily. In the browser, you can only make the get calls and see the condition. So let's just see how our get calls look like. And so now that we've created our endpoints and used it as a slash API and then I did a slash API in the beginning. Now let's test our endpoints. So first let's make the get call. We should return us an empty op empty array. So localhost 3000 slash API slash post. So when you hit send, you get empty. Now let's create a post. Finally, the moment of truth, right? So you have post and then you have your body. Let's have title, a body, let's see, and let's give a dummy title. Hello world. All right, let's hit send. Yeah, so you have the object returned to you. You have a post object created with title, hello world, body, let's see, published false, this because these were the default values and created at was date.now, which is the default date. And you have an ID. So yeah, so now you've created a post. Now let's check, let's get back to our get endpoint. Does it return us an array? Yes, it returns us an array of posts because there's just one post. Let's create another one. So hello world, hello dark. And then let's see what you've got. Lorem Ipsum Dior. So create. All right, so we created one more post and now let's hit the get. You can see we have an array of two posts. So you can see it's so, so, so easy with Mongoose, Postman, and all these other tools. You can see in your post collection, your post collection has been created automatically, and you have two objects, which, have, which has title, body, published, all of these uh, properties. And yeah, you have two objects created right now in your post collection. So this is so easy, right? I mean, all you had, all you had to do was create a controller function, Create controller functions, get post, create post, export them, then create a route with it, which would be a get route or a post route. And then you basically just also uh, use it as an API route. I mean, use the API because unless and until you register the API, uh, register the routes over here, register all the uh, all the routes in your routes uh, in your routes folder, then you wouldn't have like if you remove this line out. You can't access those endpoints. This is basically registering your endpoints. See, you're getting an error. You also run into an error. So that line basically registers all your endpoints. So do not forget to give that line because that's what decides that your routes are going to be used in your server side or not. So yeah, if this video was helpful, give a thumbs up, and we'll see in the next. We'll see, I'll see you guys in the next video with other endpoints and. We'll also be looking into testing those endpoints because most videos you will see in YouTube that they have how to create an app. That's that everyone can do. But how to follow proper coding conventions and then create an app with a test environment as well. I doubt you could see that many tutorials. And even if you do, maybe they're even paid. I guess I'm advertising myself too much. But don't worry. This is not, I'm not taking money. I'm not doing anything. You can just watch it for free and learn. All right. So give a thumbs up and good luck.